Pope Francis will turn 87 on Sunday, and he's already beginning to plan his own funeral. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's room correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, Pope Francis has signaled that he's breaking with the tradition of papal funerals in a big way. How significant is this? Uh, Brad, on the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Pope Francis gave an extended interview to the Spanish broadcaster N+. Plus. One of his favorite uh, correspondents, Valentina Alazraki, and in that interview, he basically signaled a very significant departure from recent tradition. He said that he would not be buried in St. Peter's Basilica, along with the other more recent popes uh, in the Vatican grottos, but he had already uh, made ready his tomb uh, at the Basilica, Papal Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, uh, St. Mary Major, and that he has come at a, as a big surprise. He also said, by the way, that he's going to considerably simplify uh, papal funerals, and his funeral will be one example of, you know, a simpler papal funeral. Now, the St. Mary Majors that we see there in the video, he's been uh, visiting there many, many, many times. He, he says he draws a lot of uh, strength from going there, praying there, and he made a promise to the Blessed Mother, I guess, to be uh, buried there. So that's uh, interesting that he, he is uh, going to follow through on that. Uh, now, you probably also, Jules, been down uh, to the Vatican grottos and seen all the tombs of previous popes. I know I've been there uh, before. Uh, who are all the popes buried there under St. Peter's? And and how recent is this tradition of being buried there? Well, uh, it, it, the, there are a number of popes buried there, and as you rightly said, you know, that's one of my favorite spots in St. Peter's Basilica. So, for example, Pope Benedict XVI, Pope John Paul the uh, John Paul I, uh, Paul VI, Pius II, ben, uh, Pope Benedict XV, uh, Pope John Paul II would have been there, but his grave has been transferred inside St. Peter's. In all, there are about 23 popes from St. Peter to Pope Benedict XVI, most recent. Uh, uh, you know, we also have uh, Gregory V, uh, Adrian IV, the only English pope, and Pope Boniface VIII buried in the in, in St. Peter's there. So so uh, it, it, quite, a, quite a few of you know the, the popes have indeed chosen to be buried there. So let's take a look at another way. Are, are there popes uh, who are not buried inside the Vatican, right? Uh, yes, absolutely, because the last pope who was not buried inside the Vatican was Pope Leo the Thirteenth, and he died in 1903, and he was buried at St. John Lateran, uh, the, the other, uh, in fact, the most important papal basilica, the papal basilica that actually has the cathedral of the Pope. Uh, Pius the Ninth was buried at St. Lawrence outside the walls. Uh, Clement the uh, Fourteenth was buried at uh, the Holy Twelve Apostles Church in Rome, and uh, popes like Gregory the Twelfth chose not even to be buried in Rome, but uh, I think he's buried at the Cathedral of San Flaviano, which is in Recanti in Italy. Uh, so it, it is, you know, it, it's a very interesting uh, histor historic. Uh, lineage of where popes had been buried. And of course, well, you know, during the Great Schism, uh, there were popes who are uh, undoubtedly buried in Avignon in France. Now, of course, Saint, uh, the Basilica of St. Mary Major is not inside the Vatican, If for people who are not familiar with the, the layout there at all. But uh, what else did Pope Francis, uh, you know, say, he indicated he just wanted to be buried at the Basilica of St. Mary Major? What, what did you uh, come across? Well, now, you've just made a comment that it is not inside the Vatican. Now, that needs to be qualified 
because uh, the Vatican is not only a single geographical location. Uh, the Vatican also owns uh, territories like the Gregorian University, for example, uh, and Santa Maria Maggiore, uh, St. Paul's Basilica outside the world, which is quite a distance from the Vatican, are uh, extraterritorial Vatican properties that come under the legal and political jurisdiction of the Vatican. So in a sense, he's still being buried in the Vatican, though not uh, directly on, you know, the main Vatican site. Uh, Pope Francis is, uh, you know, was very clear about this. He says he's always had a deep devotion to uh, the Blessed Mother's icon, the great, wonderful Byzantine icon that is in uh, Santa Maria Maggiore. I've seen it, and, you know, I, I can understand why he's so drawn to it. Many uh, Romans are drawn to it. It's uh, popularly known as Salus Populi Romani. And every time he goes on an international trip, he goes to the Basilica and spends time in prayer, this little side chapel before uh, the Blessed Mother's icon. He does the same thing when he returns from his uh, international trip and gives thanks in that, in that Basilica, in that chapel, uh, in front of the same icon. Uh, so that is the reason he's given. Now, skeptics, of course, who you like to see everything negative about about what you know, Pope Francis is saying, uh, are rather dismissive and say he knows that he won't, uh, you know, have crowds uh, coming for his funeral, and therefore he's chosen a smaller venue, a smaller basilica compared to St. Peter's for his funeral. Well, that'll be interesting to see uh, if the critics are right, how many people do actually turn up for that and what his true popularity is, how many people are willing to make the sacrifice to go to Rome for that funeral. That, that will be something to keep an eye on. Uh, so, okay, the Pope, you know, Francis, he's been talking about his funeral. I mean, I remember in 2014, he said, ah, you know, I maybe got seven years or something to live. There was some occult warning there that people kind of were looking at. Uh, but he isn't really ready to die yet, right? I mean, or even resign, correct? Uh, well, he isn't ready to die. Uh, uh, he's had a number of operations. In fact, he's, you know, quite fit uh, in, in that sense for an 87-year-old. And uh, he signaled his fitness by uh, saying in this interview that he's planning a trip to Polynesia next year. Uh, he is also planning to go to Argentina, and he says, uh, you know, he had a conversation with uh, the president, uh, Javier Millet. He was, of course, asked by the interviewer how he took those, you know, rather ribald insults. You remember, Brad, you and I did a couple of room dispatches on this where Javier Millet was scathing about, you know, the Pope as a communist and what not. And, uh, of course, uh, Pope Francis, it, the two are on totally, uh, you know, opposite ends of the ideological and political spectrum because uh, Javier Millet is a libertarian, he's a populist, and Pope Francis hates both those uh, political categories. But uh, Pope Francis was, uh, you know, much more of a peacemaker this time, and he said, uh, oh, well, yeah, I can understand that in the heat of election, uh, there is, uh, you know, a rhetoric that is intended to be uh, scathing, and, uh, uh, but, but, you know, no hard feelings, we will uh, meet when uh, he goes to Argentina. So Argentina is still a possibility. Uh, what is a certainty, if the Pope lives until then, is his trip to Belgium. The B Belgian Bishops Conference has just confirmed that Pope Francis has been invited for the 600th anniversary of the Catholic University of Louvain. And uh, this is one of the oldest universities in Europe. And Pope Francis, God willing, is most likely to go for this, you know, go on this trip to Belgium. So uh, in another uh Related matter, you know, I'm talking about grave matters here. Uh, I guess Pope Francis, you know, his bu uh, burial, uh, his funeral at St. Mary Majors is a, a, quite a break with the recent tradition, but not, you know, a, a magisterial break. However, you reported recently, Jules, on uh, new guidelines for cremation for Catholics, which could be seen as kind of a radical break with uh, the magisterium, uh, especially even uh, recent statements from Cardinal Mueller. Could you? Elaborate on this for the, our viewers who maybe haven't caught your article on this. 
Uh, well, yesterday we published a story on how uh, Cardinal uh, Fernandez, Victor Manuel Fernandez, the prefect of the Vatican's doctrine watchdog, had published responses to two questions, and the questions came from Cardinal Matteo Zuppi, who is the Archbishop of Bologna and the president of the Italian Bishops' Conference, very high on the Papabile list. He might be the next pope. And uh, Zuppi asked whether the ashes of Catholics who chose to get cremated could be scattered. And he also asked if Catholics could uh, reserve a certain amount of the ashes, you know, for themselves and have it distributed among relatives. Now, uh, uh, Fernandez did not respond with what seems like a categorical yes or no. Uh, he responded rather ambiguously uh, to the first question. Uh, he said that uh, there could be a place, a sacred place, uh, created for commingled ashes. So, you know, Brad, your entire 400 members of your clan. Uh, if you belong to um, maybe a football clan, uh, could have the uh, the bodies cremated and the ashes all scattered in that sacred place, provided you call it a sacred place. But what is important is that a list of all the members who are buried there needs to be displayed, you know, or, or a record needs to be kept. Uh, he then went on to say that, uh, you know, again, uh, members, uh, families may be allowed to take ashes, provided, again, it's kept in a sacred place. Now, this overturns the uh, ruling by the CDF uh, when Cardinal Gerhard Mueller was the prefect in 2016. He gave this ruling and saying categorically that, no, this cannot happen. No scattering of ashes, no taking your loved one and, you know, putting him up on grandma's piano. Uh, so so, so, so the, this has raised a lot of questions again. And... Uh, uh, Thankfully, Fernandez does affirm that cremation does not mean we no longer believe in the resurrection of the dead. He has a very good argument for that. But Catholics are upset that the church opened the door for cremation in the first place, because historically, several popes, Pope Boniface VIII, three times, for example, the Holy Office in 1886, Pope Leo XIII, uh, uh, in 1926, the same Holy Office called cremation a barbarous practice. Uh, the Code of Canon Law in 1917 said that if anyone got cremated, you know, they were virtually excommunicated and not to be given a Catholic burial. Um, until there was, uh, unless, of course, there were significant signs that they had repented of this. Uh, and very importantly, Brad, uh, the whole problem, particularly in Italy, was that in 1869, the Freemasons issued a document saying that they wanted to wipe out Catholicism and they urged members of lodges to get cremated because they said cremation is a means to the end of wiping out Catholicism because that would then undermine belief in the resurrection and eternal life. So um, uh, understandably, lots of faithful and traditional Catholics are upset that, you know, we open the door to uh, what is essentially a pagan practice, uh, you know, very common in Hinduism uh, that does not believe in the resurrection of the dead, but believes in transmigration. Uh, you know, you can come back as an ant or an elephant. And so it doesn't matter how your ashes, you know, what happens to your body or your ashes. But again, let me reiterate that uh, Fernandez has made a cogent argument for how a cremation does not in any sense, uh, you know, nullify God's sovereignty and his omnipotence to bring together what, you know, and create what will essentially be, be a glorified body and may not be uh, continuous with the present uh, earthly body that we have. So while the, uh, the Catholic Church historically was against the practice of cremation, uh, except in case of grave necessity, uh, such as a plague going on or you have to dispose of the body, the stance softened under Pope Paul VI in the 60s and, and has really gained momentum ever since. So the Church still drew the line, even as late as 2016, on the treating the, the remains as you would the body of a deceased. And now it seems that even that canonical line is getting fudged. Uh, the line in the sand is, is starting to be crossed. So, Jules, thank you so much for laying out the current story for us today and also the history behind it. 
Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. The show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless. Thank you.